Is white nationalist Richard Spencer speaking at the University of Florida? Yes. The National Policy Institute requested space for a speaking event with its president, Richard Spencer. The event is scheduled for Thursday, October 19 from 2.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. in the Phillips Center for the Performing Arts. DIDNT The university originally deny Richard Spencer's request, yes. The first request was to rent a facility on September 12. UF denied the request immediately after the violence in Charlottesville and after imminent threats targeting Gainesville and UF. Why did UF change its position on Richard Spencer speaking? UF's position regarding Richard Spencer has remained the same. As a state entity, UF must allow the free expression of speech. We cannot prohibit groups or individuals from speaking in our public forums except for limited exceptions, which include safety and security. Our decision to disallow the September event was based on specific threats and a date that fell soon after the Charlottesville event, allowing Spenso to speak in October provided additional time to make significant security arrangements. Which campus group invited Richard Spencer? No one at UF invited Richard Spencer. No one at UF is sponsoring this event and UF is not hosting Mr. Spencer. Is UF charging the National Policy Institute and Richard Spencer for this event? Yes. The National Policy Institute is paying the allowable costs of $10,564 to rent the facility and for security within the venue. Is the university paying for additional security measures? Yes. More than $500,000 will be spent by UF and other agencies to enhance security on campus and in the city of Gainesville for this event. This includes costs from the University of Florida Police Department, Gainesville Police Department, Alachua County Sheriff's Office, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, Florida Highway Patrol and other agencies providing first responders. Why doesn't UF make Spencer pay the full estimated $500,000 cost for security? The application and assessment of security fees in the First Amendment context was litigated and decided by the U.S. Supreme Court in 1992. The court clarified that the government cannot assess a security fee on the speaker based upon the costs of controlling the reaction of potential hostile onlookers or protesters under a legal doctrine called the heckler's veto, as Justice Harry Blackman wrote for the court in that case Forsyth County v. Nationalist movement, speech cannot be financially burdened, any more than it can be punished or banned, simply because it might offend a hostile mob for UF. This means that Richard Spencer and his organization may not be made responsible for paying the costs of potential protesters, onlookers or members of the public outside of the speaking venue. How do I get tickets? The University of Florida has been advised that the event organizer has decided to distribute its own tickets in lieu of using the university's box office at the Phillips Center. The university has no other information on tickets for this event scheduled for October 19, despite rumors of tickets being available starting October 14 at the Phillips Center. Why is the National Policy Institute distributing its own tickets? Our contract requires the Phillips Center box office to print the tickets, not disperse them. While most organizations opt for the box office to distribute also, the National Policy Institute opted to distribute tickets themselves. It is their event, and the tickets are theirs to distribute. There is no violation of policy. New will UF students be hosting any alternate events on the day of the Richard Spencer event? UF student leaders are hosting a virtual assembly to air at 2.30 p.m. on Thursday, October 19. Virtual assembly, part of a studental campaign called Together Up, will feature a series of videos and performances from around the UF community to open up dialogue about race relations, cooperation and diversity. UF students, faculty and staff will be able to view the assembly. Throughout the virtual assembly, students are invited to join the conversation on Facebook at facebook.com Together Roof campaign. They will be posing questions throughout the assembly and asking students to add their opinions and voices. Additionally, Together Off will be holding Facebook-based fundraiser on Thursday, October 19. More information about Together Off can be found at https www.facebook.com Together Roof Campaign. Why did the governor declare a state of emergency gov? Rick Scott issued an executive order to provide for enhanced coordination among state, county and municipal agencies which may be called upon to assist law enforcement at the University of Florida on October 19. This measure, which came at the request of Alachua County Sheriff Sadie Darnell, is not in response to any specific heightened threat. It is a process that enables various law enforcement agencies to work together more efficiently. 
For example, agencies from multiple jurisdictions can be mobilized, if necessary, without bureaucratic delays. Will classes be cancelled or UF be closed? UF plans to be open for classes and operations on October 19. Can I get an excused absence from an exam or assignment for the day Spencer is on campus? We understand that this event and possible protest provokes fear, especially for members of our Gator family who are targets of messages of hate and violence simply because of their skin color, religion, culture, sexual orientation or beliefs. Faculty have been asked to be understanding with students on a case-by-case -case basis. However, faculty should not cancel classes without consulting with their dean. Knew what is the most current information regarding access to the rates union on the day before and day of the scheduled speaking event access Wednesday, October 18th will have normal access with no ID required Thursday, October 19th will have access points reduced to include only the North Lawn doors and the hotel entrance. Welcome Center October 18th Normal Access, Campus Tours Scheduled October 19th Museum Road Entrance Doors Locked, Campus Tours Suspended Bookstore The Bookstore and Gator 1 Central will be open Thursday October 19th, from 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Food Service October 18th Normal Access, Modified Hours October 19th Employees will need photo ID, uniform, name tag for and trance event services October 18th Events scheduled after 6 p.m. including leisure courses cancelled October 19th Events scheduled after 6 p.m. including leisure courses cancelled New will any campus facilities be closed Campus classes will proceed on schedule except for some closures cancellations related to proximity to the event including Fifield Hall, Entomology, Microbiology in the IFAS complex of buildings south of Hull Road. Additionally Recreational Sports Southwest Recreation Center on October 18, the Southwest Recreation Center and UVS fields will close at 9 p.m. The building is closed on October 19 and will reopen on October 20. We are not accepting guest passes at any recreational sports facilities. Core October 19 building will be closed. Student Recreation and Fitness Center October 18, 19 Normal Operations Broward and Graham Area Pools Pools will be closed on October 19 Housing Residence Education All Residence Halls and Housing Buildings will be swipe access only the week of October 16, 20 Counseling and Wellness Center The Counseling and Wellness Center on Radio Road will also be closed October 19, but counselors will have walk-in hours for students available in Peabody Hall. Newell Hall beginning at 12 p.m. on Wednesday, October. 18. Newell Hall will be accessible by Gator 1. Cards through the closing of the building on Thursday, October 19. The building's operating hours are as follows Wednesday, October 18, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Thursday, October 19, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. On Friday, October 20, Newell Hall will open at 8 a.m. and resume its normal schedule. Rates Union on October 18, 19 building hours will be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Events and leisure courses scheduled in the Rates Union after 6 p.m. will be cancelled. October 19 – Limited access to two entrances North Lawn Level 1 and Circle Drive Breezeway near Hotel Front Desk Ground Level. Gator 1 card will be required to swipe at the door entry limited to students, faculty, and staff. The Museum Road entrance doors to the Welcome Center will be closed, and there will be no campus tours. The bookstore will only be accessible through the Rates Union. Disability Resource Center students with appointments or tests at the Disability Resource Center will need to bring their Gator 1 cards to the entrance at Reed Hall the week of October 16, 20 to gain entry. Han Museum of Art The museum will be closed Wednesday, October 18, and Thursday, October 19. Florida Museum of Natural History The museum will be closed Thursday, October 19, and plans to reopen at 10 a.m. on Friday, October 20. Smathers Libraries The Smathers Libraries will be open regular hours, including 24-hour access to Library West Wednesday and Thursday night, but we will be checking ID and admitting only individuals with UF and Santa Fe ID cards and of course uniformed law enforcement personnel on Wednesday, Thursday and, if necessary, Friday. Gator 1 Central Hours on Thursday, October 19, will be from 8 a.m. 1.30 p.m. Normal Hours will resume Friday, October 20. Health Science Center Branch HSC operations will be closed Thursday, October 19, and Friday, October 20. Normal hours will resume Monday, October 23. No other facility closures have been approved. Any closing considerations would need to be vetted and approved through the Office of the Chief Operating Officer. 
What about classroom buildings or classrooms? Some classrooms will be impacted due to their proximity to the Phillips Center. If this involves your classroom, you will be notified by your instructor or unit. New what buildings will have modified schedules or require a gate or one ID for entry. The Smathers libraries will be open regular hours, with 24-hour access to Library West on Wednesday, October 18th, and Thursday, October 19th, but IDs will be checked and only individuals with UF or Santa Fe College ID cards, and of course uniformed law enforcement personnel, will be permitted on either day, and possibly on Friday, October 20th. Recreational Sports Southwest Recreation Center Uford Hand Scan Access Only As Usual 1018 Lounge Space Will Close 1018 Building Will Close at 9 p.m. 1019 Building Close Core 1019 Building Will Be Closed 1018-1019 Normal Operations Student Recreation and Fitness Center 1018-1019 Normal Operations Housing Residence Education All Buildings Will Be UFID Swipe Access Week of 1016-1020-1019 Building Will Be Closed CWC Will Work out of Peabody Hall Counseling and Wellness Center 1019 Building will be closed. CWC will work out of Peabody Hall Newell Hall beginning at 12 p.m. on Wednesday, October 18. Newell Hall will be accessible by Gator One cards through the closing of the building on Thursday, October 19. The building's operating hours are as follows Wednesday, October 18, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Thursday, October 19, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. On Friday, October 20, Newell Hall will open at 8 a.m. and resume its normal schedule. Wednesday, October 18, normal access with no ID required. Thursday, October 19, access points reduced to include only the North Lawn doors and the hotel entrance. Rates Union access Wednesday, October 18, normal access with no ID required. Thursday, October 19, access points reduced to include only the North Lawn doors and the hotel entrance. Welcome Center Wednesday, October 18, normal access, campus tours scheduled Thursday, October 19, Museum Road entrance doors locked, campus tours suspended, bookstore the bookstore and Gator 1 Central will be open Thursday, October 19, from 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Food service Wednesday, October 18, normal access, modified hours Thursday, October 19, employees will need photo ID, uniform, name tag for and trans event services Wednesday, October 18, events schedule after 6 p.m. including leisure courses cancelled Thursday, October 19, events scheduled after 6 p.m. including leisure courses cancelled Gator Dining please visit the Gator Dining website to view adjusted hours. New will any athletic facilities be closed? Yes, Ben Hill Griffin Stadium will be closed at 5 p.m. on October 18 through 7 a.m. on October 20 and Percy Beer Track will be closed on October 18 and 19 and reopen at 630 a.m. on the 20th. The soccer match between Florida, Kentucky scheduled for Thursday, October 19, has been moved to Embry-Riddle in Daytona Beach, FLA, at 5 p.m. that day. As an employee, I am not comfortable coming to work on October 19. What should I do? Employees are anticipated to work as scheduled. However, we recognize that some employees will have special concerns. These employees should speak with their immediate supervisor about alternatives, such as working from home that day if feasible, flexing their work schedule, or taking time off. Supervisors are encouraged to be understanding and address issues of concern on a case-by-case -case basis. If assistance is needed to identify how best to address an employee's concern, please contact Employee Relations in UF Human Resources. What resources will be available to me? Counselors with the Counseling Wellness Center will be available for students, and the counselors with the Employee Assistance Program EAP will be available for faculty and staff. On Wednesday, October 18, the EAP also will be offering a group session for faculty and staff to discuss their concerns. The session will be held from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Student Healthcare Center, with other group sessions being scheduled as needed. Peabody Hall will be the satellite office for the Counseling and Wellness Center on October 19. Counselors will be holding walk-in hours only for students. I'm fearful for my safety. What is UF doing to protect me? There will be an increased level of security at the Phillips Center for the Performing Arts and across campus on October 19 and on the days leading up to the event. Since late August, the UF police have been coordinating with local, state and federal law enforcement agencies on a comprehensive safety and security plan. UF has sought assistance from these organizations to be on campus before and after October 19 to help keep campus safe and strictly enforce the law. 
What do you recommend I do to ensure my personal safety? Law enforcement agencies recommend that faculty, staff and students avoid the event and the area around the Phillips Center on October 19. They also remind everyone to pay attention to their surroundings and report anything unusual or out of the ordinary. Please download the GATORSAFE app or call text 911 directly if you see any activity that concerns you. All faculty, staff and students should carry their Gator 1 cards on October 19, as some buildings will only be accessible using the keyless entry system. Roads, parking and central campus I understand some roads and commuter parking lots will be closed. Will I be able to get to work? Where should I park? The roads immediately around the Phillips Center will be closed for traffic, including possibly segments of SW 34th as Street. As such, the parking garage and lots in front of the Phillips Center will be inaccessible. Additionally, law enforcement encourages students, faculty and staff to avoid using the parking lot behind the Hilton Hotel and Conference Center on October 19. We expect bus service to that area of campus will be limited. Since campus parking will be especially limited that day, we recommend students and employees who generally park in that area find an alternative way to campus. Gainesville's regional transit system offers numerous routes and stops with parking along 13th Street and University Avenue. Check out schedules here. Parking for the residence halls near the Phillips Center will be for residents only. Will protesters come into the center of campus? We do not know. Protesters are expected to assemble near the Phillips Center but we will have security across campus and in the community. Law enforcement will closely monitor groups marching into other areas of campus. The safety of our campus and community is our top priority. What buses will be cancelled or rerouted with the road closures of parts of Hull Road and Bledsoe Drive on October 19? Gainesville's regional transit system has announced the following changes to the bus schedule for October 19. Route 117 – 2 buses close Route 118 – 4 buses close Route 119 – 1 bus close Route 125 – 2 buses close Route 25 – buses detoured to Radio Road Route 21 – 4 buses detoured to Radio Road Route 28 – 4 buses detoured to Radio Road Route 30 33 – 4 buses detoured to Radio Road Enforcement of laws and campus rules What are the consequences of breaking the law or university rules? All laws and rules of the university remain in place. All lawbreakers will be subject to arrest. UF students could face criminal prosecution as well as student conduct sanctions up to and including suspension or expulsion. Similarly, faculty and staff who break the law or university rules could face criminal prosecution and other consequences governed by university regulations. All police arrest reports are public records. Will protesters be allowed to carry torches or wear masks? Can guns and other weapons be carried on campus? Absolutely not. Law enforcement has created a list of prohibited items, which includes torches, masks and weapons of any kind. You can find the complete list here. Why are water bottles on the prohibited items list? Law enforcement has advised that water bottles have previously been frozen, filled with substances other than water, and used as weapons. Water bottles are not being allowed because they can pose a safety hazard for protesters. Protesters are allowed to walk back and forth between the protest and their cars if they need refreshments. Hate speech, racism and university values is hate speech protected speech at UF for faculty, students and staff free to speak hate hate speech is speech that offends, insults or threatens a particular group, especially on the basis of religion, race, national origin, sexual orientation and other traits. The First Amendment protects hate speech, including symbols of hate such as a swastika, no matter how offensive it is. The First Amendment does not protect threats of violence, harassment or actual violence. As a public educational institution, UF may not ban hate speech. We do aspire for all members of the community faculty, staff and students who exhibit high standards of behavior, as well as care and concern for others. We must balance our aspirations and values against our legal obligations to protect the First Amendment rights of all, even those with views and values contrary to UF's fundamental principles. Given that, no employer student can interfere with the freedom of speech or freedom of movement of any member or guest of the university, what is UF doing to promote a welcoming campus that celebrates all people, and how is it providing support for faculty, staff and students? UF has been clear and consistent in its denunciation of all hate speech and racism and in particular of the racist speech and white nationalistic values of Richard Spencer. 
UF student leaders have been working with multicultural and diversity affairs and student activities and involvement to host a series of events promoting dialogue, education, and embracing difference and unity. This includes a virtual assembly that will air at the same time as Richard Spence's speaking engagement. More details will be released soon. Additionally, on Wednesday, October 11th, UF will hold a panel event titled A Conversation on the First Amendment in the Ryan Ballroom of the J. Wayne Rates Union from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. This educational dialogue is co-hosted by Multicultural and Diversity Affairs, the Levin College of Law, the Bob Graham Center and the Breckner Center in the College of Journalism and Communications. Has UF made previous statements regarding the October 19 event? Yes. All administration messages are posted here. How will information be communicated on the day of the event should anything happen at the Phillips Center or elsewhere on campus threatening safety? The UF community will be alerted through the UF Alert Notification System. All students and faculty and staff members are automatically enrolled to receive UF Alert text and email messages. To edit your UF Alert location settings, take the following steps. Go to the My UFL website. Click on the Access My UFL button and sign in with your data link username and password under the My Account menu. Click Update Emergency Contact I am a parent guardian concerned citizen. How do I sign up for UF Alerts? There are many options available to receiving UF Alert notifications for people outside the UF Identify Management System. Download the GATORSAFE app. To verify the notifications are enabled, go to About Preferences and Notifications Settings and verify that Enable Notifications is selected. Subscribe an email address to the email RSS feeds. Follow at UFalert on Twitter and opt in to receive notification through Twitter. Text Follow UFalert to the number 40404. Please note this is a service of Twitter and not the UF Alert text messaging service for students, faculty and staff. UF Alert tweets are delivered as a SMS text message from Twitter to your cell phone. Additional details are available at Twitter regarding their fast follow service. How can I receive the most current information on this event? Check this website for regular or updates as questions and answers will be added to this list as needed. UF will update its information line 18666 UF facts 18668332287 as new information is available. Security information can be found on police.ufl.edu. Up to the minute updates on bus schedules can be found www.gorts.com. Specific questions not addressed in this QA may be sent to public affairs at ufl.edu.